Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We are so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. Welcome. Come on in. We're having us a good time. Get your Bible, get a notebook, get some kind of device, whatever you use to take your, your notes on and follow along with us. And not only that, release your faith. Bring your faith. Expect to receive something from God. You know, we get everything from God we expect. And so to, to receive more, expect more. Amen. Amen. We've been taking the last couple of episodes and we're talking about a foundational truth, which is faith. Yes. That is such a critical part of our, the foundation of our spiritual life. Yes. And so we've been, we invite you, if you were not able to watch the previous episodes, go back and watch them because there's yes. things that we've said that yes. will be a blessing to you. And then we're going to go further with that today. But basically in a nutshell, we were talking about any structure can only go as high as its foundational yes. led it. Right. It's the same thing with a life. Right. It's the same thing with a spiritual life yes. that our foundation has to be in place. Foundational truths. Yes. These things that are, that are to be part of our everyday life. Yes. And, uh, you know, because faith is a, is a foundational truth, it's a foundational flow mm -hmm. of our life. We don't just say, well, I've got it and we don't ever inspect it again. Yeah, right. Foundations have to be inspected yes. to make sure they're in good working yes. order. Yes. And so we've been talking and referring a little bit about that. Uh, we want to have a faith that always receives. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. That's what God intended, yes. that we always receive. And you say, well, Pastor Nancy, that's just asking a lot. Well, shoot for a lot then. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because you can shoot for a little bit and get it. But if you want more, shoot for it. Right. Amen. Amen. Make that your goal and the expectation of the faith of your life. Not being okay with not receiving because the power of God always meets faith. Always. Now, don't, don't forget that the power of God always meets faith. There's never a time that someone's released faith and God's power hasn't met it. God's power always meets faith. So if we're not receiving, uh, we have to make sure, are we in the faith the Bible faith, yes. what, the, what the word calls faith, not just a human faith, not a mental faith, uh, but faith always gets results and we should not be okay with not getting results. Uh, don't be okay. Don't start a bad spiritual habit of, well, maybe next time, you know, uh, because if we become lax, with expecting our faith to get results, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give up more and more and more. Yeah. True. That's true. And we don't need to give up Amen. anything. Amen. Yeah. The devil is waiting to rob yeah. from us. Right. And uh, so we've been looking at this foundational truth of faith. And we started uh, on the previous episode looking at Jude. And Jude has one chapter. So we're going to start there in Jude in verse 3. We'll touch on it again and then we'll go further. Jude verse three, and it says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Yes. So uh, we want to have the God kind of faith that That's he's right. talking yes. about. Right. And yes. if you're born again, you have the God kind of faith in you. Now feed it. Amen. Oh, yeah. Exercise it. Yeah. 
cause it to grow. Paul said, your faith groweth exceedingly. Yes. And so uh, we want our faith to grow in strength. Right. In, because the stronger our faith is, the more we can accomplish. That's right. Right. Yes. And the more we can cooperate with the power of God to accomplish uh, that he can work through us in a greater way. Amen. I want you to see these words that Jude said, it was needful for me to write unto you. We need this. Uh, we need this. What is it to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith? Notice not earnestly contend for healing, not earnestly contend for money, not earnestly contend for business, but earnestly contend for faith because it's by faith all things come yes. Yes. or all things are received that you need. When our faith is, is in good working order, we can always receive healing. We can always receive our miracle. We can always receive the help and the guidance we need for that business he told us to start or whatever he directs us to do. Earnestly contend for the faith. That means this, protect your faith. Anything that's going to damage your faith don't have anything to do with it. Anything that belittles the message of faith, the truth of faith don't have anything to do with it. Anything that makes your faith look as though it's not important, steer away from that. Because faith is the currency of heaven. It's how we conduct business with God. If with no faith, uh, there's no business with God. You can't conduct business with God. Remember what Remember what Jesus said to Peter at one time. He said, Peter, I prayed for you. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. He said, I prayed for you. And this is what he prayed for him, that your faith would not fail. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if your faith quits on you, uh -huh. yeah. if your faith fails, yeah. if you do not have a faith that knows how to keep going, uh -huh. yes. he said, uh, I prayed for you that your faith would not fail. Mm -hmm. We don't have to have a failing faith. That's right. Yeah. That's we right. don't have to have a failing faith. Yes, that's right. <clears throat> and um, Jesus also said to Peter, he said, Satan has desired to have you yeah. wow. mm -hmm. that he may sift you like wheat, yes. yeah. grind you down, uh -huh. grind you down to you're a fine powder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. And uh, he says, but I pray for you that your faith won't fail. Meaning this, by faith, we overcome every opposition, yeah. every yeah. attack, yeah. every test. Oh, yes. Yes. Everything that comes against us, our faith will get us on the other side of that test. So that's why he said, I prayed for you that your faith won't fail. That's right. Because by faith, you get to the other side. Amen. <clears throat> by faith, you get to the other side of opposition. That's right. You're not going to get away from the opposition, but your faith can get you to the other side of that opposition. The devil's going to oppose as long as we're on this earth. He's going to oppose. <clears throat> and so here he said, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And uh, we were saying on the previous episode, notice how active these words are, earnestly mm -hmm. contend. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> it's not a passive thing. You're not going to float into this faith. The right. skill of faith, you're not going to float into. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're going to become skillful with our faith as we earnestly contend. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. That means we don't just lay back and let things happen. Right. Whatever will be, will be. Not in my life. Yeah. Not in my life. Amen. Uh, I'm earnestly contending for a faith that always receives, for a faith that works unhindered. That means I'm keeping everything off of my faith that would injure it. Uh, what would injure it, Pastor Nancy? Worry, fear, doubt, offense, unforgiveness, bitterness, ill will, strife, all those flows that damage life. Yes. They, they work against our faith. Amen. And the devil offers us those flows because he wants our faith ineffective because he knows if our faith isn't effective, we can no longer conduct business with heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so he's after our faith. Right. The yes. devil's after our faith. Yes. Yes. Tests come, they come to get your faith. Yeah. Yeah. And so he said, earnestly contend for the faith. So these are active words, as I said. Uh, we have to show that we're interested mm -hmm. yes. in yes. having a faith uh -huh. that we're skillful in, a, in this faith. Yes. 
that we don't just say, well, I've got it. Yeah, but you can have a car and not be a good driver. <laughs> and everybody's dodging you. Yeah. Right. You know, just having faith because God has given to every, every one of his people a measure of faith. Yeah. Right. Remember what it says in Romans 12, 3. He's given unto every, unto every one of his children mm -hmm. the measure of faith. What measure is that? The beginning measure. I mean, we have a measure and then we're to, do, we're to become skillful. Yes. Yes. yes, and grow skillful mm -hmm. with that measure. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so we have to be interested. Right. We have to be interested because we will not float into a great faith. Yes. Remember, yes. Jesus talked about yes. great faith, yes. little faith. These right. are right. these are these these are measures of what happens with faith. Right. And we don't want to have, and, and Jesus said about Peter, I pray for you that your faith won't fail. There can be a failing faith. There's, there's no sense in our faith failing. And so, uh, so we have to earnestly contend. Uh, as I said, without being interested, people won't contend. We have to be interested. And this, this word earnestly shows us our interest level. Um, I, I tell this story in connection with my sons because it, it, it depicts what I mean by interest. Um, I have two sons. There's nine years difference in their age. And um, when my oldest son was about 14, you know, it's hard to know what a 14-year-old wants yeah. for Christmas, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, they, they change about every day. Um, but my youngest son then was about five. And so... He was real clear on what he wanted. Mm -hmm. There was a game system that he wanted, and he wanted certain games with it. And so starting in October of that year, when he was five, he started talking about Christmas. Mm -hmm. And he started listing this game system that he wanted with the certain games for it. And he didn't leave it at that. He described the games. He described the enemies of the game. He described the good guys on the game. He described what all it would do. And I go, baby, I'm glad you enjoy, I enjoy it. I don't need to know all those details. I just don't need to know it. But every time I got, I got in the car with him, he knew he had a captive audience. I could go nowhere. And so he was just start listing every single time we got in the car. It was the same conversation. From October to November to December, I heard it every time we got in the car and then it sprinkled throughout my life in the day in the house. I mean, he just didn't let go of that. What was that? Interest. Yes. Interest. Yeah. He desired something. Yeah. What does Mark 11, 24 say? What things ever you desire. desire. Yeah. This verse is telling us how to get our desires met. What things soever you desire Amen. when you pray. So when you have a desire, you must pray. Mm -hmm. when, uh, uh, yeah. What things soever you desire when you pray, number one, you pray. Yes. What's this mean? Talk to God. Talk to God, yes. Talk to God about your desire. Don't yeah. just vent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. right? Right? Saying to people, oh, I wish this would happen. I wish this would happen. Venting won't get you anything. Nope. Talk to him about right. it. Don't just talk to people about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Learn to talk to God about your desires. So what things ever you desire when you pray, number one, believe that you receive. So you have to believe something at the time you pray. At the time you talk to God, believe that he heard you and, you, and that, he, that he granted you your desire. What things ever you desire, number one, when you pray, talk to God. Number three, believe you receive. That's your part. Desire, talk to God, believe you receive. His part, and you shall have it. That's his part. Stay off that part. Oh, yes. yes. It's not your job to have it. It's your job to desire it, talk to God about it, believe he heard you, believe you receive it, and his part is you'll have it. And you'll say, well, when, do I, when will I get it? No, that's not your part. Get off his part. Amen. Stay on your part. Yes. Amen. So what, what many times people think they need more faith when sometimes they just need to stir up their desire. Yeah. They yeah. need greater yeah. desire. Uh -huh. this, is what, this is what Jude was saying earnestly, contend. He's talking about your interest level, your desire for something. Yes. What, you, what you greatly desire, you're earnest about. That's yeah. true. Yeah. true. That's if we're not true. earnest, it's because we don't desire it that much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if somebody's television broke that, you know, 
that didn't have, they say, I, I don't have the resources. If their television broke, all of a sudden, yeah. Yeah. They, would, they would get very creative, uh -huh. right? Yeah. To come up yeah. with ways to get the desire for a new television met. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yeah. 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 So, meaning this, earnestness means we've always got a way. Yes. Oh, that's good. There's always a way, and we're going to find it. Oh, yes. oh, Amen. Oh, this is like the man, the, the, the paralyzed man carried up on a roof. There's yeah. always a way. Yes. Remember, they couldn't get into the door to where Jesus was because the house was so packed. Four faith friends carried him up yes. on the roof. Now, that, that would have been a sight to watch. What is that earnestness? Yes. Desire. Yeah. Many times people just think they need more faith when you just need to get earnest about your faith. Oh. Well, yes. praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, interested people just don't quit. They don't give up. They continue. Many times people, people don't receive for one reason, lack of continuing. But, but, but my son, he continued from October through November to December. He continued and I heard it. <laughs> I heard it every day. And I'd say, baby, I heard you. You don't have, no, no, no. He would not go without it being unsaid. It wasn't enough for me to say, I, I, I heard that. I, you, you told me that. It, he wouldn't, oh, no. It's like, just in case my hearing was gone <laughs> the day before or my, or my memory lapsed. No, he was going to make sure every day he voiced it. So then, because my other son was 14 and I had no idea what he wanted, in November I started asking him, what do you want for Christmas? I'll think about it, which that tells me he's a pretty blessed kid. Uh, right? When you, I mean, that means you're listed in very long. You've got a lot of good things going on in your life, brother. And, and so I asked him in November. He never got back to me. I asked him in early December. He never got back to me. I asked him in mid-December. And find, he, didn't, he still didn't have an answer. And finally, one day, my husband and I were sitting in the room, and my oldest son walked in, and he says, I know what I want. He says, I want a snowboard, and I want all the gear to go with it. And then he turned around and walked out. So my husband turned to me and said, are you going to get him that? And I said, nope. Yeah. And he said, well, why not? You've been asking him what he wants. I said, he only asked once. He didn't want it very bad. And I said, he won't even remember that he didn't get it because he didn't even remember that he asked. Uh -huh. yeah. wow. At Christmas, uh -huh. I did not get it for him and he never brought it up. He, wow. And he never brought it up afterwards. Why? Mm -hmm. Lack of interest. Uh -huh. yeah. When the devil hears us only say something once and let it go, he knows we're not that interested. Earnestly contend. We're interested. I said we're interested. We're interested. And we're interested enough to contend. Meaning we're not just going to lay down and let things rob from us. Let situations rob from us. Let the devil rob from us. We're not doing that anymore. And even if we look back over our life and we say, we can see that we did that, we're picking back up what we laid down. You can pick it up. Why? Because spiritual things don't rot. Praise God. They can be, they can be, they can be taken hold of and picked back up again. Amen. Amen. The, and why, why do we have to contend? Not with God. We're not contending with God. We're contending against the enemy. Yes. We're contending. Uh, and he, listen, you have to know this. We don't have to hold out against the devil. He's got to hold out against us. Why? Because we're contending. That's right. We have to know this. The fruit of the Spirit that is in us, patience is one of those. Yes. The fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, all these things that belong to us and that are in us at the new birth, the Holy Ghost imparted them to us. It's up to us to see to it that they grow, that we become skillful. It's the same thing with our faith. See to it that it grows, that we become skillful at the use of it. Same thing with the fruits of the Spirit. The devil has none of those fruits. You just stay on the fruits and you win. Yeah. Oh, Hello. Patience is one of those fruits. Meaning this, I can outlast the devil. He doesn't have the patience for the long run. 
Amen. He'll let go before I do. He'll let go. But I'm interested and I'm contending and I'm not letting go. He'll let go. He'll let go. Why? He's a quitter. We've seen his history. He's a quitter. Amen. But we're not. And faith will, will, faith will keep us. If I could say this, I love, some, I love something that Sister Gloria Copeland said. Oh, my, 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 it was so good. I was in a service with her on this one occasion and she made this statement. She said, through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. And she said, uh, um, without patience, faith will quit. But see, that's why we have patience on the inside of us. We don't give up. And that's part of contending is we employ patience with our faith. All that's part of the contending. The nine fruits of the Spirit are part of contending. We stay in love. We stay in joy. We stay in peace. We stay in temperance, All long-suffering. All these things we stay in. Why? Because it keeps us from letting go of what God's provided. That we don't give up. Uh, the deeper things of God don't come to the casual observer. To move further, to move further in faith, to move further in the, the plan of God for your life, to move further in what you're born for. The direction of God is always advancement, promotion, increase. It's always the direction of more. Yes. Um, <clears throat> but you don't float there. Mm -hmm. You contend for it. Mm -hmm. And you contend because you're interested. You're earnest yes. about it. Yeah. Amen. Um, they have to be contended for the deeper things of God, yes. the further things of God, the more of what God's plan holds for us. We have to contend for it. Good. We have to contend for it. You know, contenders can't be slothful. No. Uh, or casual toward their victory. Think, think, think about it this way. A soldier... I'm talking about someone who's, he's first boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. yes. He's on enemy territory. One thing he is not is casual. That's right. yes. Yes. He either contends or he doesn't come home alive. That's right. You don't get over there and go, well, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a walk about town and see what the, <laughs> and see the scenery. No, I'm not there to, to be a sightseer. I'm there to contend. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. A soldier has to contend to stay alive. Yeah. That's true. That's true. If he gets careless, mm -hmm. if he's not watchful, mm -hmm. it can cost him everything. Yeah. And I mean, the, 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 we're warned. I mean, James told us, uh, be watchful, be vigilant. Mm -hmm. This is all part of contending. And we, we do it in the direction of our faith. Why? Because if we'll be watchful and contend regarding our faith and be interested in having a faith that always receives, always, always. receives. Always. A faith that's free from, uh, free from failure due to not, I won't yield to worry. I will not let my faith fail because I worried. I will not let my faith. See, we have to realize that these things will short circuit our faith, so to speak. And we say, we're not going to do that. Uh, think about in raising children. Uh, I have, I have a wonderful family. My son's great blessing to my life. And we're, we're, we're carrying out the plan of God together, but th we didn't float into that. I contended right. yeah. as a parent yeah. for their future. Yeah. Meaning this, um, I watched, I paid attention, mm -hmm. I was present, you know. Um, I did my part using my parental authority. Mm -hmm. If I would have laid down my parental authority and not enforced a standard in our home, yeah. then I would have had issues. Yeah. But we were able to bypass issues mm -hmm. because we contended as parents. Oh, good. Amen. Yeah. And you say, well, Pastor Nancy, I didn't maybe. You know what? You have divine help now. That's right. yes. You have divine yes. help. Yes. And you can employ heaven's help in the contending. Right. Amen. Yeah. All, all's not lost. That's right. I said all's not lost. You can, you can, you can now, uh, but because I dressed things when they were, when they were younger, I didn't have to address certain things when they were older. That's part of contending. So you know what I mean by when I say contending, but really, um, we have to contend for every advancement. What about contending for the fulfillment 
of the vision of our local church. Every believer should have a pastor. Yes. Yes. Every believer should be part of a local church. Yes. Uh, why? Because the Bible tells us don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Do you know that's part of contending for the faith? Sure. Yes. Amen. Why is that part of contending for the faith? Because Jesus, in observing the multitudes, it's recorded that they were fainting and scattered abroad because they were sheep having no shepherd. Their faith would have quit. Their faith was failing them because they didn't have a shepherd. They didn't have a pastor. Part of having and contending for a faith that always receives is yet you need a pastor. Yes, Amen. You need a pastor. Well, I love the word. So do I. But you still need a pastor. Yes. Because he's a spiritual teacher, uh, yes. a voice into your life yes. to help your, your family stay on course. Yes. But when we're part of a local church, we should be contending with our pastor for the fulfillment of the vision God gave that pastor for the local church. I'm not in that local church so that my vision can get fulfilled. I'm in that local church so the vision God gave that pastor for that local church should could be fulfilled. It's not the pastor's job to help me fulfill my vision. It's my job to help that local church fulfill the vision. That has to be contended for. Your pastor, God has given your pastor a vision. Know what that is. If you don't know what it is, how do you contend for it? Yep, that's, that's, right. Right. That's, good. that's right. Well, even so, what about contending for your marriage? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. yeah. yeah. What about contending for your health? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Too many times we've been okay with not receiving, yes. Yes. but yes. we're contenders. Yes. We're contenders. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. means we show up yes. to the yes. rink. Yes. We show up to the rink. Yes. We don't just right. stay in the dressing room all the yes. time. Yes. We show up. Yes. Contenders have to come yes. out of the dressing room. We yes. show up at the yes. rink. Yes. Amen. Yes. What about contending for our prosperity? Yes. These things belong to us, yes. but yes. wrong thinking tries to talk, yes. take it away from us. We have to renew our mind. That's what right. about contending for our home? Uh-huh. The, what yes. about contending for our peace and our joy? These yes. things belong to us. Yes. Keep the wrong thing off, off of yes. these things. Yes. That's part of contending. Sure. Amen. 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 Well, we're learning, aren't we? Yes. We're learning and there's so much to learn. And, yeah. and we're just thrilled at the opportunity to get to hear these things. And not only that, so much of these things you already know, but I'm just watering. Yeah. I am watering these things for you because when we say these things, it refreshes us so that we are, we're refreshed in our race. And we realize I'm just not sitting back and waiting for God to put me over. He's already empowered me with all that needs to happen for me to be put over. And I'm going to do my part of contending for my faith. Amen. Well, we invite you to watch next time because you don't want to miss it. We're going to keep on going this direction. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. God has provided a way for His children to have ongoing visitations from Him. Your life will be changed as you meditate on the revelations in this book, Visitations from God by Nancy Dufresne. Order your copy now at DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Dufresne Ministries Miracle Crusade in Tulsa, Oklahoma at The Rock Church, April 16th through the 20th. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.